So hello and uh, welcome to uh, Discover Creative Careers. Um, I'm Sarah Jones. My job at ARU is supporting students to make the right choices for them in terms of the courses they take and the careers that they go on to do. Um, here today with George Langdon. Thank you, George, for joining us. Um, for his session, TV or not to be, which I absolutely love um, the your title there, George. You could tell that you uh, did writing at university as well as film. Um, so without any further ado, I will hand over to you um, and you can tell us about your adventures in TV. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Um, hi, welcome. Um, hopefully this is going to give you a little bit of an insight as to what I do, how I got into TV and kind of how I stuck with it for so long because there, you know, there are positives and negatives to working in this industry. So if I can give you a little bit of an insight and just kind of help you make a decision, um, I'll be, I'll be happy to help. So bear in mind, this presentation is just to kind of give me a bit of an idea of what I can talk about. So this isn't going to be, you know, I'll probably ramble at some point. So just kind of bear with me. Um, so this is me having fun on my job, which is something that not a lot of people can really say, especially some of my friends, they, you know, they have kind of standard jobs and they just seem fairly kind of happy just trugging along. But I genuinely love my job, despite all the negatives, which are a couple, but you know, it's just such a fun experience. So yeah, so this is kind of roughly what you could be looking at if you wanted to get started in TV. So these are the kind of two main avenues you can go down. There is also um, being an editor, but I'm not, I'm not an editor, so I can't tell you too much about that, unfortunately. Um, so these ones I can tell you about. So there's production, which is the kind of more logistical, um, you know, kind of planning side of things. So booking flights, hotels, making sure a shoot runs smoothly. And then there's editorial, which is a bit more creative. You know, it's kind of people on the ground, on location, doing filming, uh, making sure, again, the shoot runs smoothly on that side of things. Um, so yeah, there's the more kind of logistical side on production and the more creative side in editorial. And they do have their own start. So everyone starts at the same way. They all start as a runner or a logger, a team assistant, something like that. So that means doing all the kind of all the jobs that you don't really want to do. So making teas and coffees, cleaning up other people's messes, uh, and just generally being on your feet for hours and hours at a time just to keep things running, basically. Um, everyone starts off this way. Um, I'd say 90% of people start this way. You'll know who hasn't started as a runner because they won't be very nice. Every, if everyone started off as a runner, they will be lovely to the other runners. So that's how you can tell. Um, so yeah, there's different avenues. Um, whereas production is more of a kind of office-based side of the industry, I prefer the editorial side, which is, you know, like I said, being on location most of the time. It just gives you a chance to see other places and, you know, do different things, maybe use a camera, maybe just kind of hang around while people are having an interview taking place, that sort of thing. Um, so it's just the more it keeps me occupied, which I suppose is the best way to put it. So why work in TV? And the simple answer is it's just not a normal office job. It's completely different to anything else I've tried before. Um, I'm not going to lie and say every day is completely different because it's not, but every, I'd say every job that you do have in TV is slightly different from the last. It could be, even if they're two documentaries, they could be about different topics. It could be, they require different things from you. It could be, you learn different things, but each job is completely different. You know, you'll never be stuck doing the same thing going, oh, I've done this for the past two years. So there's just, there's not that opportunity to kind of feel bored or trapped because the contracts are so short, you'll just kind of go, you'll just jump from one job to the next. So it's never boring, really. It just keeps you so, yeah, keeps you on the move, which is nice. Yeah, so um, excitement. TV is, I mean, I think an exciting industry to be in. It's, especially if you're on the editorial side where you are constantly in different locations at, the same, at you know, different times. Um, I mean, you could be, what was I? So I, was, I worked on Don't Tell the Bride a few years ago, um, which is just utter chaos. But we ended up going to Wales to film for a couple of days, 
and then we flew to Ukraine and then kind of flew to, uh, for a few days and then flew back again and was just kind of constantly running around doing stuff. Um, but I do have a short video to show you of something that I did about a year and a half ago. Um, now, just to warn you, the, the audio on this is not great. So if it feels like, if it sounds like it's kind of glitching or if it's, it's the audio is kind of clipping a little bit, don't worry, that's, that's how it is. It's, um, apparently microphones and speed boats don't really mix well together. So um, yeah, but I'll, I'll play it to you in a way. And this is what I got up to about a year and a half ago. Okay, so that was, we were filming in Gibraltar with the customs and police officers, uh, basically following them, try to catch smugglers. Um, so that meant we were on the back of a speedboat most nights for about eight hours, just kind of waiting in the darkness for smugglers to come into Gibraltar from Morocco or from uh, just down the coast in Spain, pick up some goods and then transport them back around the coast again. It's a very short trip, but it's very dangerous for the smugglers because there is always a boat out to try and catch them. So that's what, that's something you don't really see that often or kind of, that's not, not something you're really a part of that often. Um, and you do get a sense of, it's not just a sense of, you know, cops are good, smugglers are bad because the guy that fell overboard in, in that clip um, the, the customs officers picked him up and took him back to their base and we spoke to him and we said like, well, why are you doing this? And he just kind of shrugged the shoulders and said like, I've got three kids, I've got a family I need to feed and there's no jobs at the minute. So it's not just as cut, as cut and dry and as well. What he's doing is illegal. That means he's bad. Therefore, you know, he is bad. It's just, there is that kind of mutual respect of, well, you know, the cops are doing a job, but then also the smugglers are doing a job as well because there's just a high unemployment rate and this was hot this was during COVID as well so there was just not that many jobs available that were paying that much so he risked everything just to just to smuggle tobacco from one side of a rock to the other so again it's just something that you don't see that often and you don't think about that much as well where it's just you know you just see flashing lights when you're driving down the road and you just think oh they're after some criminals but it just makes you think that there might not be it might not be as cut and dry as that. So you do always get to see something slightly different when you're working in TV. And another thing is the travel, which kind of links into it. So in the bottom right here, we have um, a monkey climbing on our camera in Gibraltar. Um, I don't like those monkeys. They will take anything from you. And as soon as they take a bag or a packet of crisps, it's theirs, it doesn't matter. If they've got your bag, it's their bag now. That's all there is to it. Um, and then we have Ukraine before um, the situation that happened that is happening at the minute. Uh, and then here is the middle of Wales, which I can't quite remember where that is. It's a very long name and it's middle of nowhere with no signal. So I couldn't tell you even if I tried. But um, the point is that you do get to go to some completely random places. I feel like I've seen a lot of the UK just by working in TV. And I've gone to places where I've never really thought about going. It could be some remote part of Wales, it could be a coast in Scotland, it could be just in the Lake District, you know, kind of all the little towns around there that you don't think about ever visiting. But it can take you to some really interesting places. And yeah, I you don't get that with many other jobs.
but there are some negatives and the biggest one for me especially was breaking in because it took me a I think it took me about two, two and a half, three years just to get into the industry because I didn't have that knowledge that I have now. So while it seems daunting at first, if you have, if you have a little bit of an insight as to how to get into the industry and where to look and kind of how to present yourself, then it shouldn't be that much of an issue, um, which is kind of why I'm doing this because I never had this kind of knowledge before. Um, so the important thing is if you look for, if you particularly look for kind of edit houses, um, production offices, um, even if you look for, you know, kind of, um, graphic design or, um, visual effects companies and just send your email to them, to them and just see if they want an office runner or a production assistant or something like that. Um, most of the time, you know, they might get back to you and say no. But if they if you keep if they keep the, the your if they keep your CV, you never know. In a little bit, in a short time, they you know their runner might leave or they might move up, and then they might want to get another runner in. So it's it's all about being at the annoyingly it's all about being at the right place at the right time. But the more CVs you send around, and the more you kind of make yourself known to companies, the easier it will be. Um, it's. <laughs> It's still tricky. I'm not going to lie. It's it can be completely soul destroying trying to break into this thing when you can't find an in. It can be very soul destroying. But once you get in, you kind of feel you kind of feel that stress kind of slip away slowly. Um, but yeah, it's the important thing to try. So CVs to production companies, edit houses, visual effects companies, um, and just ask if they have work experience if they need a runner um sometimes they might even offer like an internship or a um like an apprenticeship scheme um but yeah definitely inquire um just bombard emails around to any place you can find um and you'll find somewhere oh also if you don't worry if you don't live anywhere near london because production companies are popping up all over the place in like birmingham leeds um quite a lot of companies up north actually um, over the past couple of years. So don't worry too much about if you're not close to London because there's there's bound to be something else nearby. Um, I feel like as long as you live near kind of a main train station and it can get to other cities, you'll be absolutely fine. So this is the other, <laughs> this is the other side of things. It took me a good couple of years in the industry to actually not be stressed about this anymore. And that's not knowing where your next job is coming from or, you know, not knowing where your money's coming from the next month. Um, you know, cause TV contracts, they don't last that long. They, the shortest they could last is maybe a few days. Um, it could even last a few months if you're lucky, but it's knowing, okay, I've got five months in this job. I don't know where the next job's coming from or, or even worse. Like, okay, I'm on this for a few weeks. I should probably start looking for another job now, just in case there is something that's popping up. Um, and that is the main concern is that, you know, you, you do learn to save so well, just because you don't know where that cash is coming from. Um, you know, I mean, my friends have all got kind of fairly standard jobs, uh, you know, an accountant, um, media executive, that sort of thing. They know where their money's coming from next month. So they can kind of plan ahead and they can, you know, they know where they can save up to and how much they can spend flat but tv people don't do that we kind of screw our money away and save it as much as we can just in case there is a, a bit of a dry month which there usually is around i'd say maybe november to march it can be very very quiet um just curious enough not really over covid during covid i've worked more than any other couple of, like period of time but there is there is a very very definite quiet period around the winter, um, and that's where most TV people kind of hibernate, and maybe get a second job, or they'll just kind of live off their savings until they get another job in a in around March or April time. Um, so that is something to consider, even though there is that stress there of, you know, looking for jobs constantly. It does go away. It's not as you know, like now I'm not I'm not that stressed about it because you get after a certain amount of time, you get to the point where people will actually come to you 
for uh, you know for job offers or you know you might get a, someone might have seen your cv from a production manager friend of theirs or something like that and they'll actually seek you out so it's it does get a lot easier once you kind of establish yourself within the industry um, so even then that negative kind of slips away again after a couple of years um yeah the the working hour working hours is i think probably one of the big negatives there like okay so prime example and this is a worst case scenario when i was a runner um i once had to pick up a director and an assistant producer both on different sides of london um before we go to a location for filming so filming starts at eight so i had to get up at four in the morning to pick up these two crew members get to location set up and then by the time we wrapped i think it was about seven or eight and i still had to drop off the director and the assistant producer which meant i didn't get back home until about maybe half 12 one in the morning that is a very very rare occurrence of when you know you do get exploited and you do just wonder why you're doing it because nine to five or nine to or you know half nine to six that only really happens in the production side of things um it's not always the case i mean the show i'm working on now there's a lot of kind of uh, casting to do with america so a lot of people stay behind at the office and probably log off about eight or nine at night um so it just depends on what production you're on and kind of where where the location is but that is a you know but on location that is a, a common thing you will work at least 12 hour shifts maybe more if you are a runner which is unfortunate um but i feel like they're kind of making strides to kind of nip that in the bud a little bit and not be as exploitative um but it is still there it's still that case of well you know i'm, I'm on a 20 hour day and the director's on a you know 10 hour day technically from door to door so it's yeah it's it's not great but i don't know personally for me it kind of makes up for it because the days go so long uh, they go so quickly you kind of don't really notice that you're on your feet that long until you get back home and then you just kind of crash out um but it can be dangerous working that long of a day um which i think companies are kind of finally beginning to realize and come onto so these are some important job sites that you should probably take note of. And again, um, Sarah, I'll, I'll send all this to you anyway, so you can kind of um, share it with people or kind of, you know, take stuff from. Um, but yeah, these are the kind of main sites that you want to look at when you're getting started or even when you're just looking for jobs. So um, I don't know if, if any of you use Facebook, but I, I don't really, I just use it to find jobs basically. Um, but these Facebook groups are absolutely vital in kind of getting your first job in TV. Um, so I'll let you jot these down or kind of screenshot them or something, but um, you have to get kind of accepted into the group once you kind of fill out a little questionnaire and that sort of thing. But most companies will advertise jobs on these groups, um, which is something I never thought I'd, I'd say that Facebook is going to be my main source of looking for employment. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a main a main source of it. Um, just because it's just so easy. Most people have Facebook. Um, you know, it's, it's easy and free to set up. So companies can just kind of throw an advert out there and, you know, see what happens. Um, also, with most of these groups, uh, usually on Mondays, you can kind of promote yourself. So if you put your CV up on these groups and say, oh, I'm I'm looking for my first job as a runner, or you know, I'm looking to get some work experiences, you know, shadowing an editor and that sort of thing. Um, most of the time, they will get back to you and just say, yeah, yeah, like um, contact me on this email address or something like that. Um, same goes with if you want any kind of advice about your CV, most people will be happy to help you out, um, which is quite nice. Um, Talent manager is it's a bit like LinkedIn for TV. So it's, yeah, so you can have a profile and you can look for jobs and upload your CV and that kind of thing. Um, 
and I'd say I'd say talent manager and Facebook are my two main sources for jobs. The other one being people just kind of come to me for jobs now. Um, but yeah, talent manager is absolutely vital uh, when it comes to looking at this, um, and it's free to and it's free to si uh, sign up as well. So even if you just kind of check it out and just see how it all works, that's also pretty handy. Um, screen skills is also very useful at just kind of looking for a bit more advice. Ignore the clock. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, so screen skills is, um, it's kind of like an industry tool for people that are looking to get into different sides of production. Um, if you're looking at kind of editing, visual effects, gaming, that sort of thing. Um, and they can offer advice and kind of uh, mentorships um, if you're looking to get into that side of things. Uh, it's also good for learning different skills. Um, most of my jobs now, because of COVID, they require you to log on to Screen Skills and fill out a, and do like an online course on COVID and how we can kind of minimize the risks just because it's so prevalent and Screen Skills is that kind of, you know, it's, it's that higher standard. Um, a lot of people use it. So again, screen skills is very good. Even if you wanted more, if you, even if you had more questions after this, or if you wanted a bit more information, screen skills is definitely worth it. Uh, and never ever buy a premium membership for a job site. It's just not, it's not worth it. Um, talent manager, for example, I think for a year, it costs about 70 pounds. Um, and they promise to, you know, do things like bump your CV up, up a queue of people applying for a job and, and all this sort of thing. And I pay for it once and never noticed any any change in how and how many jobs I got offered or how many jobs I got. So it's just not, it's not worth it. It really isn't. Um, what else? And then one more. So just a couple of a couple of final thoughts just to kind of, you know, just to kind of keep things going. Um if even if you don't have a car, I'd say learn to drive. It's absolutely vital for a runner if they can drive. It opens up so many different jobs and avenues. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, if you're if you're a production, if you're in the production office and you're a runner, then obviously, yeah, you won't need to drive. Um, but if you ever need to go on location or, you know, drive somewhere to pick something up or something, it's it opens up so many more jobs. Even if you have a license, even if you haven't driven in about six months um, because you, you know, you don't have a car, or you don't drive, it's definitely worth it just to have a license um, just because a lot of companies will ask for it. Um, uh, try and keep your CV to two pages max. I mean, I mean, obviously this is going to be so tricky because, you know, you might not have that many jobs at the minute, but if you can try and keep, so say if you work in retail or a restaurant, a uh, coffee shop, um, a bar, something like that, Put that down anyway, just because it shows that you can work long hours, you can work up, you can, you know, you can be on your feet all day. Um, and it shows you've got a good work ethic. It shows that you actually want to kind of, you know, get out and work. Um, same goes for any kind of, you know, any extracurricular things like clubs, or uh, if there's, you know, if there's any kind of, I don't know if like they have media clubs at schools or anything, or, you know, film clubs or anything like that. Um, just anything that's related to what you're looking for in TV. Um, would be very good uh, and then after a while you can trim that down to one page um, just by keeping all the relevant jobs that you do have and all the relevant experience that you have with you know cameras editing software that kind of thing um, that can all go on one page because production man managers are busy people um, you know they'd rather just go through something that's like short and sweet that they can kind of quickly have a look at and then just save for you know save for the good pile or they might just save it as a backup you never know um, but yeah, try and keep your CV as kind of concise and relevant as possible. Um, and this is an important one. Never accept a job for no pay. So on these Facebook groups, you will sometimes see posts about, you know, people saying, oh, we're looking for a, a runner or a data wrangler for, you know, for a, a short film. Uh, unfortunately, we can't pay, um, but this is good experience. You can put it on your CV, whatever. Never take it. Um, most of the time, the admins that run that Facebook group will just take down the posts anyway, um, just because they don't offer, they don't even offer anything like, you know, travel or lunch or anything like that. It's just not, it's not worth it. Um, work experience is a bit of a, a, is a bit of a different thing because 
they might still offer you travel um, just for kind of being around. Um, and also you might not necessarily be working on work experience. You'll just be kind of shadowing different departments. Um, so it'll be good to take a look at and see what kind of work experience places offer um, just in case. Um, Cause they might just be happy with you just, you know, shadowing an editor for a bit or just the whole department. Um, same goes for internships and apprenticeships. There's, I mean, I can't really speak too much about them because I never, I never did one. Um, but make sure you do your research and just make sure it's kind of, you're getting out of it what, you know, what you want and just make sure you're not getting exploited for it. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a minefield. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's my presentation. <laughs> uh, Sarah, I don't know if there's uh, anything you want to ask, or if there's anything kind of uh, glaring that I haven't that I haven't mentioned. <laughs> no, thanks, thanks, George. That was really interesting. Um, if anyone wants to put any questions in the chat for George, please do, and I'll come to them. Um, it's really interesting. I think we've got a really good insight into you know what the pros and cons are, and. Um, you know, it definitely resonates with the other presentations that I've seen this week. That it's very much for the kind of love of it and the excitement and the fact that you know, no two days are the same and the rest of it, and that sort of offsets the kind of negatives. Um, I did want to ask, in terms of the fact that, like, you know, uh, how what what is the legal or technical status of your work? Are you like self-employed as a freelancer or so? Are you yeah, so this is where it's a bit of a funny one. So I'm so at the minute I'm technically um, fully employed uh, by the company. So that means okay. they they sort out my you know tax, national insurance, that kind of thing. When I get to um, like a producer director level or or um or that sort of thing, I think that is when you're kind of expected to make your own limited company. Okay. Uh, I'm not quite sure of the whole legal side of things because I've okay because I'm not quite there yet. I'm kind of yeah. I'm holding off on it, but um, yeah, that's when you're kind of your own limited company uh, and your own kind of employee. So when you so that means you'll have to invoice for jobs uh, and sort of your own sure, tax. and manage your own tax affairs and those sorts of things. But at, at your level, you don't need to do that yet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so and, and is the pay fairly consistent between jobs or does it kind of vary massively depending on the job i mean i don't want you to go into any no, details i don't know like that's, that's actually a fair point because like i've because i always hated talking about money with companies because it's just it's always it just makes me clench up inside but the important thing to know is you you never you never go down on your pay um so okay so just for an example and this is on um back two uh, i think when you're a runner you start off around kind of four to five hundred pounds a week um and you won't go down from that like um so say if you're a runner for maybe say a month and then you go on to another runner job and they say well what's your rate you know you're not going to go down on what you want before like most companies will say what were you being paid on your last job um or kind of or or what's your rate so they'll kind of you know they'll make sure that you never ever get underpaid compared to your last job which is good um, but it does also mean that you can kind of up your rate slightly. Um, so, yeah, so you're always kind of increasing your pay with every job because it's, you know, it's almost like you're getting a slight promotion with each with each job because, yeah, yeah, because because credits mean everything. So if you have a, a, you know, three researcher credits, you're more likely to maybe get hired as a assistant producer because you have that kind of experience to back yourself up, which means you'll then be able to get more money next time because you, you know you're experienced so yeah credits are are kind of the more important thing so it's not it's not as much of a kind of when people usually have you know a job in accounting where they're like oh i've been here for three years i've now got like a slight bump up in sure. your progression it's like you're you're constantly progressing in tv um whether it might seem like it or not it's you know you're getting that experience and you're getting well known by a company and that means you're you know you're getting you're getting established and you're getting well known um and people people will notice that interesting um are there any jobs that you wouldn't do like are there any programs where you'd just be like no i wouldn't do that e even for the credits if the credits are everything i still wouldn't do it or are you just kind of fairly open to everything love island you, you wouldn't do love island 
any particular reason why you wouldn't do Love Island? Lo Love Island, Only Wears Essex, any of those kind of like fake reality things, like no yeah. money in the world would, would get me to work on that show. Um, I did, so I, the closest I came was, there was a show that was called, I think it's Eating With My Ex on BBC Three. And it's like, it's as bad as it sounds, but it was, a, <laughs> it, was a, it was a celebrity version where it was these two, these two people from TOWIE um, that were on it. And, and they were the most vile people I've ever met in my life, just because of how they spoke to and about one another, just of how they kind of, how they presented themselves just, you know, roaming around. I just, I absolutely hated it. And I just, yeah, no money in the world could get me. So to that's just a personal thing. You didn't enjoy that experience compared yeah. to everything you've done rather than kind of like, can, can you kind of get pigeonholed and like, will people go, oh, this guy just does reality TV. Does that happen in the um, industry? Kind of. It's not as, not as much as, as, you know, sort of, as you might think, but it's like, say if you do, so say if you do a lot of reality and then, maybe a job pops up for a documentary show or a documentary series. Yeah. Um, if you haven't had that much experience in documentaries, but only reality, then you might get overlooked for someone who has more experience. But it's that annoying catch 22 of anyone mm. for an entry level job where it's like, well, you know, to get this entry level job, you have to have all this, all this experience. But to get all this experience, you need to have a job. So it's like, you know, it's a constant circle of, well, where am I going to get that experience from if you don't give me a chance? Um, so maybe, so if you do end up starting out in TV, maybe it's good to just kind of, you know, like hop around between different genres. So, you know, maybe do a documentary series, entertainment, um, like factual entertainment, and then just kind of, you know, just, yeah, as many fingers in as many pies as possible, just to kind of keep yourself as varied. And you might even find something that you want to, like stick with for a bit or you know yeah. you might just want to kind of you know bunny hop um but yeah it's definitely it's definitely worth just kind of trying different things just for the just for the sake of trying it and just seeing that you can you know seeing what you can actually do what you can learn so so what was the like first entry moment for you what what was the kind of pivotal point from you know you what, what was the moment in in your mind that you broke into the industry so i did a so for me, it was uh, work experience. So it was, I did a week of work experience at a company in Camden called Shine TV. Uh, and they're a, very, they're a very big company. They've done so many different things, but they're all under a big umbrella of other companies. So it's, yeah, it's huge. Um, and that was literally just doing, you know, office work. It was, you know, getting going out and getting tents for a, a show that they were filming, you know, um, uh, you know, it was just doing like little bits and pieces around the office just to kind of, you know, keep myself busy. Um, and then I think it was a few months later, um, I contacted them again and they and they said, oh, well, we're looking for a, a tech runner for this police show. And it involved moving up to Newcastle for a few months um, and backing up all the footage that came in from uh, all this filming with the police. So kind of jumped at the chance of it really and that was my first that was my first proper tv job really and that was yeah so that was my first thing um and that was just from work experience so it's it's all about kind of making yourself available or making yourself known um the amount of producer directors that i've annoyed just by kind of being on location and just saying like can i help you with anything and they're like no no like just chill out for a bit it's fine but anyone who's worked like a, another job has been like, I can't just sit here and not do anything. I'll feel like I'm, you know, if anyone sees me, they'll feel, they'll think that I'm not doing anything. So, you know, you're just constantly running around annoying people saying like, please give me something to do. Like, I can't just sit here. Um, but genuinely, there are just times where there is nothing to do, where there's, you know, if they're doing an interview for two hours, you know, what are you going to do for that? Are you going to, you know, you just got to sit there and kind of either take notes if they want to take notes or, you know, just listen to what they have to say. So it's... I think that's the thing, isn't it? You you clearly get yourself noticed by, you know, trying to be indispensable and, you know, putting yourself forward to help. And the fact that you followed up that initial contact, hmm. you know, I can see that lots of people might have kind of just let that go or sort of focused yeah. elsewhere. But the fact that you followed that up, you know, and that was, 
your own initiative that you got that kind of first paid job yeah i think you know it's, it's quite important it's it's all about contacts um and just and just annoying people basically so any say if you just have a list of production companies that you've emailed you know a month before send them out again like there's you know just because people might be busy they might it might have just kind of that email might have just gone straight over their heads um just keep keep sending out emails as as soul destroying as it is just keep doing it it will you will eventually get noticed by someone because you know, the thing you'll notice about tv people is they they do a fairly serious job but they're not serious people they you know they do, and they do genuinely want to help want to help people want like you know get into it so yeah. you know if you're young like you initiative do that because as, as you say about you know people higher, higher up the food chain if they started off in the same place as other people it is kind of you know I, I can see that in the creative industries when I talk to people they do actually genuinely want to give something back to people yeah which is really nice so so Rachel's just um popped in the chat and actually that's the way that our conversation was going anyway um oh, yeah. about networking and building contacts in the industry as an important element in your job search I'd say so yeah so um so the job I was in in uh, Gibraltar, um, when I left that, I got a I got an email from a production manager who said, "Oh, um, hi, I'm Hannah. Like I, I worked with, basically, she worked with another production manager that I was working with three or four months before, and she said, "Oh, yeah, I, I got your CV from um, another manager, and I was wondering if you're around to do some um, interview transcriptions." Like she said, it's only going to be for like a couple of days a week, maybe every now and then if if I get some coming in, but would that be interesting to you? So it's all about that kind of, again, it's all about making yourself known and just kind of saying, even when you leave a job, just saying, look, by the way, keep my CV. If, you know, if anything pops up, let me know. Or, you know, if you have any, any production manager friends that are looking for someone, just like send over my cv and just you know just letting people know that you are available and that you you know you want to kind of keep working for them um you'll because you will find the right companies that that people have been there for years and years because they're really good um i mean outline productions is a, is a good one because there's a few different companies within that umbrella um and yeah people just don't leave like i'm working for them <laughs> i'm working for them at the minute and my production my series producer I think she's been there for about 10 years like just because they are just they're good to work for they're chilled out you know like no one's gonna berate you for you know stupid stuff like you would in any other office or something it's just like you know it's a very chilled out kind of environment um where you know if you're having a bad day you're just most, you're most likely to get taken to the coffee machine or to the kettle and then just kind of you know vent about it so it's um yeah so definitely networking and building up contacts is just great because then you can just bombard people with emails and ask about work placements or apprenticeships and even like entry level jobs so yeah definitely um so yeah definitely about building contacts uh portfolio that's interesting i think a portfolio is a portfolio is good if you're kind of filming um so if you've if you've had a lot of jobs where you're kind of out on location and you film stuff um, it could be handy to have a portfolio as well, just of, you know, like edit, just like brief edited together clips that you can just kind of show people as like a show reel and just say, look, here's stuff I've shot, just so you get an idea of what I've done. Um, uh, same can also be said if you're looking into editing as well, um, because again, it just shows off your work. So yeah, absolutely, portfolio, show reel, um, whatever you can get, even if it is like short films that you've done at uni or sick form or college or something because it just shows that you are for slight you're keen and yeah even if they're not like the camera work's not great like what are they really expecting out of out of someone who's just come out of sick form it's you know it's you know it's definitely worth showing that and just saying look i am interested in this um i can tell you right now i've i'm a much better camera operator than i i was about four years ago <laughs> so absolutely yeah just show just get like a show reel or portfolio um and definitely get a list of contacts so you can just yeah bug people with um another question from me is um about what like the key differences between tv and film 
for example, and do people within the TV industry and film industry cross over much or do people tend to focus on one or the other? And could you ever see yourself working in film? Um, I So this is a tricky one because I've, I did meet a director in TV who, who has worked on films or he's worked on kind of uh, drama productions and then kind of crossed back over to sort of like factual just for a brief moment. So there is crossover. Um, it's weird because factual TV and uh, dra- and like drama and like fiction TV is just like it's like they're like they're kind of the same, but then they're different beasts as well. Um, so it can be tricky. But screen uh, screen skills, which I spoke about earlier, um, I think they do offer a kind of mentorship for people that did want to cross over from one side of TV to the other. If that was your, if that was what you wanted to kind of just try, because a, a an assistant producer in factual might not be the same as an assistant producer in drama. Same is kind of for t, uh, for film as well, because runners. I'm trying to think because I've I've not had that much experience with with film because there's there's just so much more going on in the production. There's you know hair makeup. There's about three different assistant directors. Um, you know, there's just so much more happening. Um, so unfortunately I can't say too much about that, but there is, I think there is certainly crossover, but I think it's more about being established in one side of TV or film first and then kind of, you know, and then yeah, there's like sort of transferable skills and that kind of thing. I'm I'm wondering actually just like hearing your response whether I've actually kind of drawn the line in the wrong place there. So do you work predominantly in factual TV? Mostly, yeah, or like um, factual or documentary. Uh, yes. Yeah. Things. So, would you say that? So, could you see yourself working in more drama-based TV? I would like to. Um, again, I think it is just that thing of figuring out how to cross over into it because it is, yeah, like I said, it's 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 not quite as cut and dry as that. Um, yeah. Which is annoying because I, I was kind of hoping that I could just kind of jump between the two and kind of deal with it, but. Yeah, there's there's a lot more going on to it um, in the background. So an assistant producer in um, documentaries might do casting or script writing, uh, bits of research, that sort of thing. But in drama, it could be something as it could be something like going to a location and checking it out, and you know, kind of setting up, you know, like things before the actors get there, and like it's all. It's all like uncanny valley where things are slightly, you know, they're slightly familiar, but then they're very, they're sort of different as well. Yeah, it's, the best way, it's the best way I can describe it, I'm afraid. Yeah. No, no, that's good. That's that's really helpful because I think I kind of had different kind of preconceptions of how it might work. And, you know, again, I may be wrong, but from what you're saying, it kind of feels like it would potentially be easier to cross over from TV drama into film drama. Yeah, I'd say I'd say that's more of a that's more of a leap that's more of a kind of a short leap, yeah. Because that's yeah, because that's you know, because it's it's kind of same but different sort of thing. Yeah, so yeah. That's I think that's yeah, I think that's more that's more accurate. But I mean, it, it, it's interesting from an outsider's perspective, looking at the creative industries, you kind of go, oh well, it's all you know, film and TV, it's all the same, isn't it? Mm. Um, and actually, at ARU, we're kind of expanding our range of film courses, so. Um, as well as like film production, we've now got media production and TV production, kind of just, you know, um, identifying those kind of differences. And actually there might be a different focus in those areas between those different specialisms. Um, So if you could go back in time and meet George, you know, 17 or 18 or even slightly older, would you give yourself any advice? Is there anything that you'd do differently in your journey? Mm. I'd, I'd say definitely start sending emails out early. Um, I kind of wish I, I kind of wish I started sending out emails around sort of you know when I left sick form, just to get the ball rolling. Um, even if it is just for things like work experience, for you know for a few days or a week, just to kind of get things you know, just to get things rolling in. Um, but yeah, I is think, there I think a specific reason you say email rather than like messaging people on LinkedIn, or could you could you have joined Talent Manager at like eighteen and started connecting people with that way, or is that for more people who are already in the industry? I think it's I think Talent Manager is more for people that have that have been kind of in the industry. I'd say I'd say if you're definitely starting in, then 
um, I'd say emails and yeah, I'd say maybe email, maybe LinkedIn is a good thing to do. Um, but those Facebook groups are definitely worth it as well. If you're if you're looking for a work experience or your first runner gig, um, those Facebook groups are definitely worth it. I guess even just in identifying opportunities or individuals and kind of <laughs> together what what the network looks like. Sorry, I don't know what is. He just kind of woke up and scared himself. <laughs> Having a dream. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then just finally, is there any, because um, we're nearly up to time now, is there any bit of advice? You've given some great advice. Is there any one piece one piece of advice if you had to focus on for the people listening to this? What, what would that be? I think it's definitely the, the kind of networking and building a list of contacts. Um, def, like definitely, if you're sort of like 17, 18 and you're looking at, at TV, then I'd say definitely have a look at messaging you know emailing like production offices and edit houses anywhere that might that might offer it um again again even if you're not even near london and you're kind of somewhere near a big city there's going to be something nearby um even like a graphics design or a vfx company um that can just get you a bit of experience with running um so yeah definitely networking uh, putting yourself out there and yeah, just bombarding people with emails as much as possible, just to get that that first step in the door. Great. Well, thank you very much, George. Um, I've certainly learned a lot, and um, I hope everyone else has as well. Um, so thank you for joining Discover Creative Careers. I'm going to end the recording now.